Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we are going to be painting up another ultramarine. This time, we're going to go for a green one. That will be a dark angel. I actually just found out you get upgrade kits for these. I didn't even know they existed. I wish I didn't live in the middle of nowhere, so I could pick one up and make it actually look like that faction. Nevertheless, because of the success of trying out speed paints on the red ultramarine, this blood angel, I think it came out really, really well. You know, I've already decided I'm happy enough to use speed paints if it wants sort of tabletop quality. It's a nice, quick 20, 30 minute job. This video is really just going to test how the green looks and whether it's the colour we want for Dark Angels. So yeah, I'll be using the new Speed Paint by Army Painter. This will be Absolution Green and we'll be painting this up to a Dark Angel looking character. Just before we get started, I just want to point out I drilled my barrel. I feel so happy and so proud that I remembered to do it for once and it's going to look infinitely better. Let's get some green on a dry palette. I'll just mention that I've also not attached his hand yet just because it's going to be easier to get to his army bits and we'll paint this separately as I go along. I'm going to start using my big size 2 brush by Redgrass Games. I'm going to just generously apply this all over his armour. So I'm going to start on this leg. I'm going to take a bit of care because I don't want to get too much on this knee pad because I'm going to be painting that in some sort of squad markings. But the rest of his leg is good game, I guess. Good game. I don't think that's the saying. It's our saying, but not the one I wanted. See how thick and quick I am applying this. Now it is going to pull on some of the flat areas, and I still haven't decided if thick is better. Sometimes putting it on really thick just it gives it the sort of weight to drag itself off of the flat surfaces, and then other times it just makes it much worse and gives a big pool like you can see there. So I'm still experimenting and trying to work out what works best for me. But I feel like dragging this paint down to the bottom is a good default stance to have. Again, on the back, I'm going to be avoiding this sort of soft bit of uh, the join in his armor. So I'll try not to get too much green on there. I will be able to just touch this up using some Wraith Bone if I spill. Oh, I should have mentioned this is primed with Wraith Bone Army Painters color, not color, Army Painters contrast primer, even though the speed paint range does recommend and suggest you can just use their matte white primer. And I've done plenty of videos trying that out. It does work. I just personally find it to get a little bit of a grainy finish. And this contrast paint just gives that smoother finish. And I just, you know, for a couple of extra bucks, I am just going to splash out, treat myself, give me the luxury primer to begin with and just get that slightly smoother finish. So with both legs done, I'm just going to go and apply that exact same technique over the... Oh, I've missed his foot down here. With both legs done, I'm going to go and apply that exact same technique over the rest of his armour pieces. Well, it's been about two weeks now of this drying and mostly just got distracted painting other things. So apologies if this transition is incredibly jarring or I say exactly the same things as I said in my previous clip, in which case I'll delete it and you'll never hear this bit. But I just wanted to mention that this colour has come out fantastically well. I really, really, really like this green and I think it's taken to a marine really well. It's popped out each panel. You can see this has run into the recesses and give, given so much definition and it was minutes of work. It's absolutely fantastic. This is my favorite ever painted marine. I have to admit that I've noticed the belt is in green and this marking is also in green. It's just so much green, so little effort to this, you know, green blood angel that I'm really, really, really happy. And I think this might be my new favorite chapter. Hopefully once this miniature's finished up, I'll be able to take some awesome pictures to show you just how good this looks. Hi everyone, Mike here, and I hope you'll give me just less than a minute to talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for the last couple of weeks and I have to say I love it. It's hard to get me to try something new so at first I was reluctant and now I'm glad I did it. I immediately gravitated towards photography because if you paint miniatures and if you are watching this then you do, getting the perfect picture for social media is something we're all trying to do. I watched the series called iPhone Photography How to Take Pro Photos on Your Phone by Dale McManus and I learned a lot about what my camera is capable of. Skillshare has thousands of classes you can take from people across the globe. It's super easy to navigate around the site, there's no ads, and the series I watched was broken into small, easy to digest segments, which is perfect for people like me with a very short attention span. So if you're like me and you want to up your miniature photography game, check out the link in the description. The first 1,000 people to use it will get a month free at Skillshare. Now back to Ben. 
just waiting for this belt to dry in the knee and then I'm going to go and paint some more stuff. In fact, I can do that now because it's not in the way. So let's paint in the emblem on his chest using just a metallic. I'm going to use Claymore Blade, but any light silver will do the same job. I'm also going to catch these, um, I don't know what they are, these tubes on his face. Give them a little bit of a silver look. And what else have we got? We've got his gun let's get the handle of his gun let's get the the bits on his respirator is that respirator yeah i think it is on his backpack essentially all these bits i've left let's get those in silver i am going to use contrast over the top of this so this is just just a base coat to give a metallic look to these pieces so did it actually change my mind i went for silver on the gun i also did a few little little bits on these whatever these are and these little bits here and these little bolts whatever they are back of his legs too a little bit of silver here and there and got his earmuffs too uh completely forgot that his his arms aren't attached and therefore this gun's not attached so we'll add a little bit of silver to the gun which for this miniature is going to be basically all of the bottom section of this rifle um so you got sort of the oh no I've been taught what these pieces are called. It's so hard to remember, guys. I'm, I don't have a gun. This isn't easy to know, but the magazine, that's a bit. The magazine acceptor, let's call it that. Then you've got, ah, oh, the forearm grip, the foregrip, whatever this is with his hand on it. So this wants to be silver too. And uh, did I drill the barrel? I drilled the barrel. I probably already had a song and dance about that. I drilled my barrel. I feel so happy and so proud that I remembered to do it for once. In previous clips, as I've said, it's been two weeks. It's hard to remember. Should we get this bit up here too? Yeah, let's get this one. All of this bottom bit where you attach the strap. Yeah, I think that's what that's for. And then the butt of his gun back here too. So we're really just leaving this top piece. I'm going to paint that in red, but I will use contrast as well. Well, not contrast, sorry, these are speed paints. It will probably not look amazing because that's an incredibly flat surface, but let's see what it looks like. And if it doesn't look good, you can always paint this bit properly. Maybe it's a piece that needs some real paint because it's just so, so flat, but we'll, I'll do it. I'll do it and we'll see together. Well, next up, I'm going to paint on his emblem his insignia across his chest. And for that, I'm going to use Flaccid Boner. I've not used this on metallics before. I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure it's going to, it's going to come out as a light gold, which is from all the reference material, the sort of gold that you want on his chest. And we're going to see how good this looks together. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident it's going to be good. Let's see when it's dry, but fingers crossed. I'm also going to paint up... Oh, how am I so bad with every name ever? But the dangly bits from his little seal that's attached to his crotch. But yeah, I want those to look like little bits of scroll. So we'll get them in the same colour. For the next parts, I'm going to use this glory hole grey and touch up all the bits that I want a sort of grey look to, as well as going over, yeah, all of the silver metallics that are left. So that's going to make them all look like, you know, shaded silver by the end i think this comes out looking like a really really nice looking silver so that's how i'm going to do that so i'm going to get his little gun pouch here his holster i'm also going to get that handle that i decided to paint in silver in the end he's also got these soft little bits in between his armor which are flexible and i'm going to use the same gray on those as well which is nice because that's like kind of like this whole area here it's just getting this grey applied to it and it makes it a dead simple this, this this faction this chapter sorry it's just so easy to paint it's absolutely beautiful you can whiz through these marines can't you it adds up when you've got sort of 50 marines or whatever to paint how many marines do you need in a to, to have a standard game somebody let me know in the comments below i'm still still learning warhammer if you're watching the channel you're probably very aware that I'm very, very new to this area of the hobby. In fact, interesting story or not, I actually went to Nottingham in the UK today, which I think is actually home of Games Workshop itself, but I just went in a Games Workshop shop. And in all these years, I've never ever been in one before. Uh, it was a, it was an eye-opening experience. It's actually really, really, really cool. The people in there were exceptionally friendly and very, uh, you know, happy to help. In fact, I had my daughter with me and she built her first ever Space Marine. Now, you'd think she'd have done one living with me and I've built plenty myself. But I actually don't have any of those quick fit ones. Those really easy, easy for sort of kids, if nothing else, and easy for myself. So they uh, 
the guys in the shop gave her one and helped her build it. I also probably wouldn't have trusted her with the nippers myself, but they didn't they didn't care. They just let her get to it and she had an absolutely fantastic time. She loved it. She's now asking if we can go to the shop and paint every week. So we'll see how that goes. But if anybody is watching and they play in the Nottingham store, do give Dan my thanks. He was the gentleman in the store who uh, yeah helped my daughter build her first marine. I'm sure we'll be back to do some painting sessions. It's quite funny. She doesn't want to paint or play with me, but to uh, go to the shop and she was in her element, off she went. And yeah, big shout out to the actual shops. I will be attending a lot more in the future, I think, just because I, I had such a very, very good experience. Let me know in the comments below your experiences in these shops. Were any of you reluctant like myself? I just thought, you know, it'd be a lot of pressure to buy a load of very expensive miniatures but instead it was like the opposite nobody even mentioned me buying anything and obviously i own a lot already so yeah thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it as i've been rambling away passing some time i've painted up all these bits of silver and i'm going to catch this sort of canister here i'm going to leave these other two satchels i'm going to do those in brown just to add a little bit more variance in color to him and make it a little bit more interesting but i think we'll have this one in gray as well something like that and then there's just a couple more soft bits i'll, I'll do those off camera so i can get that little bit closer i've missed this edge of the gun haven't i missed the pistol side down here so we'll get that too um but yeah i'm gonna do those soft bits just off camera because the camera's a little bit in my way obviously you guys won't have a camera in your way and that patches anything haven't i let's see if that dries better than i painted it but let's not forget his gun is not attached so again i'm just going to do all of the silver bits of his rifle and just catch all of these and just trying to dodge that last bit i've not painted yet because i want that to be a different color we'll do that in red momentarily but yeah i'll just go and go and get this gray all over these last bits of silver here just quick pause take a minute just to admire how that pallid bone came out on his chest emblem i think that's the exact gold i was looking for a nicer impale it also worked well on the seal obviously that's what i was expecting but yeah that's how that pallid bone looks if you want to apply it on top of a silver and get a metallic shine to it by the end next on my palette is a little bit of this slutty red and we're going to be painting the actual seal part of this seal and i think i needed to do a little bit of that in green just messed that up slightly so i'll grab a little bit of the green again and just touch that bit up there but the actual wax part i'll just get a catch like that uh, let's get this end as well wow that was remarkably easy wasn't it I can't wait to reattach this gun so I can stop forgetting to do it, but I'm going to use the same red across all of this last bit that's left. I'm going to try and apply it very evenly. I, I, I'm I still trying to get good at doing flat surfaces. I personally, depending how you want this to look at the end, it's probably not the right place to use this speed paint, but I still want to keep up my speed. I want to just get this done and, you know, doesn't matter what happens to mine. You guys judge. If you like it, do it. If you don't, don't do this bit. Just paint this bit normally. I think, to be honest, I want it to look uniform anyway. So I probably should just use some opaque paints on top of it anyway. But, you know, it's a good experiment, isn't it? So let's see how it looks when it dries. So a little pro tip, I would advise doing that red before doing the metallics because then it can just overspill that little bit and you can neaten it back up. It was a lot harder getting the red sort of perfectly where I wanted it on that gun without making the silver red on top. But just, it doesn't matter. I might have managed to do it. Uh, it's not impossible, but yeah, I think it'd be easier if you get the red first. Then we're on to the last color that I'm going to use. And that, this is for the two pouches that I left. And we're going to use hard on leather, a sort of mid range brown and just paint those up looking like two leather pouches on his buttocks. And just like that, just like that being adding a base, doing his eyes and adding some decals, you know, all the little finishing touches that take a speed paint job from looking pretty good to looking pretty amazing. Now, the guys, there are videos on the channel if you want this exact base. There's also videos on the channel for adding decals and a final one for drilling barrels. If I didn't bang on enough about that for you, there's a dedicated video so you can check that out. There'll be links in the description below. Now this actual speed paint job, I think has come out ridiculously well. This green is a really, really nice tone of green, much better than that orc green that I've slated and banged on about a few times in the past. I actually really, really like this particular color. And then I think the speed paint has taken really well. There's 
definitely, definitely some highlighted edges, sort of edge highlighting done for free, it, you know, very quick speed paint and we got that. And then those recesses, look at the legs. It's really, really pulled into the folds, folds, I don't know if that's the right word, of the armor. And I think it's just looking really, really smooth. There was definitely some pooling on the shoulders, which I covered up a little bit with one of the decals, but the other side's a little bit more noticeable. So we do have that flat surface problem but I, I just think I think it's worth it it took me five minutes if that to paint the entirety of the green I think it might have been one to two minutes to be honest it's a long time ago but I'm very very happy with this I think this might be finally uh, a, a color a paint scheme a speed paint that I can get behind and paint up an entire army of space marines anyway guys thank you all ever so much for watching and if you would like to see any more chapters let us know in the comments below I'll see you again soon couple of bonus things I wanted to point out. I don't think I've got a couple of bonus things to point out. So I'll just keep the arm of his... <laughs> so did actually change. Oh, look at this crazy setting on the camera. Get yourself, get your life together, yeah? Things like that. It is avoidable. I think we can start making that work towards us. I'm talking too much, so I'm going to start this little bit again. Ugh.